Hello, this is Anna with Anna D. Scratch and Crafts. It has finally warmed up enough that I can open up my patio door so I can actually do some resin. So what I've got started out today is I bought a couple of new molds, well actually three different ones. These, believe it or not, are going to be little bitty dragons. Uh, basically they're so tiny I can't do much as color, so once they come out of the molds I will be hand painting these to get the desired end effect. This little dragon is going to go inside, once it's finished up and glued together, in the egg mold. So this will actually be a baby dragon inside the egg. You may have seen some of these, so we're going to head, get that started. The other project I'm going to start today is I'm going to do two more candles filled, this time with little rose flowers. I got lots of different colors, so we're going to do that up, and I'm going to do it different than the last time you saw it, where I filled it up first and then poured. I'm going to pour first because I got way too many bubbles the last time. So I have my resin mixed up. You know it's a one-to-one -one ratio. You've seen my other videos where I've showed you how to do that. It's been sitting here a while, and most of the bubbles have started to rise. I'm going to glitter the dragons, so I need to pour that out of the way, just a teeny bit in the smaller mixing bowl. And I've got my little tweezers over here. I don't want to over glitter, but I do want glitter. So for the smaller little dragon molds, since they are going to be painted, or most of it's going to be painted, I don't need too much glitter. So just a tiny bit. Side. Move this so you can see it very gently, and I know it's not going to take too much. Pour it in slowly because I'm trying to get in all those little cracks and crevices. Now that I've got it half filled up, because there are going to be little places things have got to get into, I'm going to give it a little squeeze here. This helps to get rid of the bubbles and put everything into all those little cracks and crevices. Kind of give it a tap. And let's finish filling up. Again, I'm going slowly. One, not to create more bubbles. And this way it'll move in, and that's it to the top. So we'll put that one to the side. And that can cure. And move the other little baby in. What these dragons are, they're little dragons already half hatched out of eggs. So they are going to be cute if I get them painted up the way I want to. And not quite enough, but that's enough to let me give them that squeeze that it needs. To get everything into all those little spaces. move any bubbles out. So I need a little bit more. Going to go ahead and fill this up because I've got the other dragon and the egg to do and I'm also doing it with the blue glitter. Thank you. 
I'm stirring it gently because I don't want to cause any more bubbles than I already have in there. Now, since I have two different mixtures that may be a little bit different in the amount of glitter that I've used, I'm going to very gently combine the two pores together. That way it makes them even. And this last little bit at the bottom will not be that pick of a deal that it's not mixed in. I do want it all the way up to the top. Get the drips. Oops. And we will set this one over to the side and let it finish up. Now for this particular dragon, actually let me move that over so you can see this one, I want a little more glitter. I want it to show up more because it's going to be inside that egg. So I want it pretty well loaded with the color. this off. I don't know if you can hear it or not. Got the birds hooting in the background. Slowly coming to spring in the Rockies. And the birds are showing up. Move around so I fill in all those little cracks and crevices. Being a liquid, it will self rise or self leaven itself. But it helps to get it all in those little spaces first. Okay. Now I overfilled here just a little bit, but I can move it. Because remember these two halves have got to fit together, be glued together, so I need a flat surface. I don't need it bowing too much. I think I showed you this trick before. You just put it on the tip and you can pull it out. That's better. To the top but not over. Horns are filled in. And that one also goes off to the side to cure. Now for this one, I want a little color and a little glitter. So I can pour this back in here 
leftovers. I don't think I want blue. But that's all right. I've got the little bit of blue in there. These are roses. I want a pink or a red. This is a bigger container, so I can just pour. Now, not as much glitter. I just want to kind of sprinkle through there to give it a pretty look next to the roses. So that is more than enough. And it gives that clear just enough of a tint. You can still see through it. And I'm stirring slowly again, trying not to incorporate any more bubbles than I have to. Let's get my glitter away and out of my that one's clean. That's the one I need to wash. And now we're just going to pour a little bit at the bottom of both. I'm not filling them up. I'm kind of looking at the edges and getting pretty much the same depth on both of them. Now as I will not be able to replicate the same color on each pour, we are going to have slight differences. If you saw my last time I did the candles, I actually changed the colors. And this one I will still be using a silver and red. Now, let's take the little roses and I'm going to pull that sticky off the bottom. And too thick. I really don't want to mess up a pair of tweezers. And remember now that we want these to go on the outside. So I'm going to kind of dunk them. Make sure I get resin all in those little cracks first. And you can see how bubbles are coming up. And while that one's doing that, I'll take another color. Get rid of that sticky on the bottom. Don't need it for this project. Throw it in. Dunk it down. Let it seep into all the little cracks and all the bubbles come out. Now sometimes you coat items to get bubbles out of it, but since these are flowers, come off of there, a little hard to coat these. So dunking them in the resin that's there and letting them sit and get rid of their bubbles is the best way of doing it right now. Need another different color. And you notice I am wearing gloves because believe me, by the time I'm through with this, I will be touching, oh, you can see. I got glitter and resin on my hands. And you want to use all the safety precautions you can. All right, that one's soaked, so I'm going to move it now upside down so it, the petals face outward once it's done. I may need two toothpicks to get them in place. I'll set that over in that corner. I'll put this one up in the other corner, back just a teeny bit. This one's been soaking longer. Actually, I don't want them that close. I want that one to move just a teeny bit. <laughs> chopsticks. Maybe that's what I should have gotten, a pair of disposable chopsticks. I have to remember the next time I'm out in an oriental restaurant. Okay, this red one can turn and go in that corner. 
actually I do want one up against the wall here it's sticking out which is all right it'll be covered up when I go do the next one okay and this other one I want a white like that I don't want to come off. Maybe I should have done that before I started this. Well, now you can see what I'm doing. Let that one sit in there and soak. Take the purple. Off. And another one of those beautiful burgundy. No, you're supposed to be in. There we go. And in. Getting all those little crevices. This time I think I'll stick that up in the corner over here. I'll just shove you up against the wall. Oh, broke the toothpick. Trash. Which is all right. I have a whole lot of toothpicks. Okay. I'll slap you up on the side here. Hold it in place. Kind of design as we go. If you flipped over on your back, come on. And you're back on your side, which means I can put one more in. What color? So I'll do this lovely little purple one here. And we'll set you there. And we will let that also sit and cure. And once it's cured, then we can do another layer and I can put some more of the roses in. Part one, done. We get to wait around for, it's still a little cool, so it may be longer than 24 hours before this sets up. I want to make sure everything is nice and cured before I go on to step two. We're kind of ready for part two. Kind of. We are ready for part two. Need to remove these. Oh, no, that turned out pretty. And let's see if I can get this one out fairly easy. I have showed you if they don't come out easy to do the soap and water thing. So let's see how these behave with me. Kind of hard to see, and it looks like I got a bubble in there. But we'll see how they look once they get painted up. Oh, that one came out a little bit nicer. Hopefully, you can see some of the details. Again, once I get it painted up, should be a little bit better. 
Of course, this is the uglier dragon. That's the cute, cutesy dragon. So those two molds to the side and that mold to the side. Well, no, I was going to use this one. Make sure they fit and they do. I forgot to bring the glue over. Am I hiding my glue? Back with my glue. <coughs> this does dry clear. The problem with cleaning up is you put things away and you can't find them. So I just need And again, this is where toothpicks come in. Smear the glue to all the little points. I have used this glue together with resin, so I know it's does not react and it works well. So let's put the two together. And do remember you have to get this lined up because once it glues and sets, you have to accept what it looks like. Just set it aside where it's not going to be bothered or messed with. And once it dries, we'll go on to the next step. Now remember, resin is a patient art. It does go in steps. Have my resin made up. It's been sitting. You can show all the bubbles with bye-bye. One of my other projects needs gems. And I've got these little molds for like quartz, that sort of gems. I've got a little triangle mold and I've got kind of a hexagon. I do have circles and squares and whatever, but these are the two that I'm gonna use for this project and some different sizes. I want it to be lovely purple glitter. And my stir. Another reason I love these little cups, it's got that tiny little pouring spout. Oh, phone. Put it on hold till it stops. Nothing important usually isn't on that phone. So this is where it gets fun. <clears throat> Again, pour slow, let it get into all the little nicks and crannies. Now you don't need to see me pour each and every one of the little crystal things. It's all the same. But I will show you me pouring in too. Now being this type of container, it is possible I've caught an air bubble. So I'm going to take a toothpick, just gently down. Move around just a little and bring it up. That way if there's an air bubble, I would bring the air bubble up with it. 
Let me clean that off. And then I can finish filling it up. When I do diamond art, I've got all those little gems that fling. Or anyone who's opened up a pack, they'll notice they've got a wrong color in there. So I, I don't throw them away. I've got them. And this is one of the reasons I have them. One, they make good eyeballs for resin. I've used that a couple of times. But I'm going to see how they do as a glitter. That's why I said I was going to use this again. Now that I've put all the gems in, I need to finish filling. Again, I don't need too much glitter in this, just the teeniest bit to give it color. Because it needs to be different than the clear egg. Is that enough? It looks like it should be enough. And just finish filling. Make sure I get up here in the horn. And again, especially on these, I don't want to overfill because I've got to glue the two sides together. So I can always add, Oops. as you saw in the last one, a little hard to take away. Make sure I get all the way end up in the horn. Maybe I'll put some gems up in the horn too. That one needs a bit more. And put that one to the side and we'll see how the gems come out. Now we're back to our candlestick holders, which means just the tiniest bit of the same color. Come on, I need to get some in here. That's it. Don't need any more than that. And now we can bring them in. And basically the same as what I did the first time. Evenly pour. Okay, put that to the side. And as before, we're going to sink the flowers. Yeah, there's not one there, so I won't put this one. Let's sit in here. One 
over on that side. Just kind of set one if it will cooperate. Over on this side, so it shows out. Or maybe as large as that one is, I'll put it here on the big section. How's that? white now you see the green fell off of it so I'm just going to leave it off I'll just leave this white Set it there. Now I'm running out of room to dunk, so I'm going to dunk over here. See how those bubbles are coming up? If I didn't do this beforehand, those bubbles would have been stuck. Okay. There's my toothpick. Because there is not much left to the top, I am now going to put the roses in that will be facing this side of the candlestick holder. And that is the reason I wanted to dunk it in there first. Pink. A little pink one over here in this corner. That should do. See if I waited until this layer cured, then the roses would be sitting up too high. Okay, that one's done. And I'll move it over here. This way, when I go do the last layer, that's all I have to do is actually pour the last layer. So this one needs white. And I think I got room over here. That one just to get it out of the way. And I want to set this red one in. Turn it the right way so all the bubbles come out. That one's going up against the wall there. I'm going to set the pink there, that'll set, come on, I want it to actually set up and out a bit. White over there. Or maybe I'll set the white, this pink that way. And we'll put a red.
Thought I had enough. I need one more. I'll get that later. I need one to sit up on this side. Now this last pink one's not going to get too much inside it. Only because it's <laughs> pretty well full here. But I'm not as worried with this one since it is going to be sitting up. That last layer I pour can be poured straight into it and the bubbles have a place to escape. So let's see if I can get that one to sit up a little bit better. It's underneath it will that'll be perfect yeah one more here Again, it's not going to be filled in, but it will be down in the resin, so it'll be caught on the bottom. And when I go to pour the next layer, I can pour this first, get all those bubbles out, and it'll look fine. Done. So that needs to set, cure, one last layer. And one last cure and we'll be done. So on and this step on to the next. And if you enjoyed my video please press the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't, and the notification bell so you know when my next video is out. Thank you!